So, uh, hello, I'm Thomas, Thomas Patzke. Um, I'm working since uh, 10 years in information security, and before I started, my first touching point was in the 90s somewhere. Uh, uh, with the security topic. Um, actually, I'm working for the ThyssenKrupp Zert. Uh, it's a big company in, in uh, Germany that uh, makes uh, many stuff, so uh, steel elevators, components for cars and uh, machines, industrial facilities, uh, even submarines and uh, such uh, nice hoodies, so uh, many products. And uh, my main job uh, in the Zert is um, application security security testing, so normally I'm on the off offensive side, but uh, I also support uh, the team in uh, incident response, and uh, one of my topics there is uh, log monitoring, and this is how I came into this uh, topic and how then finally uh, Sigma uh, evolved. Uh, so, uh, what I will be talking about is, uh, uh, first I give a brief introduction into threat detection by log analysis, uh, then show what uh, are some problems here uh, and the motivation to uh, start a new um, open source project to create a new uh, uh, description format. Um, uh, show some examples how Sigma rules uh, look alike and uh, how they are converted in uh, some target query languages. And uh, finally, uh, I will um, uh, show a bit about the community and the contributions uh, we had and uh, what's the current state of the uh, project is and uh, where we uh, uh, would like to move with it. <clears throat> so threat detection with log monitoring. Um, uh, one uh, example for it is uh, authentication. So um, when you have a large number of fate logons, for example, this is something that is suspicious, something where you uh, put some effort in to uh, look if this is some misconfigured device or misconfigured system or if someone tries to move laterally in your network. Um, or uh, attempt of uh, changing some specific accounts like DSIM is a directory service recovery mode. So this is an active directory account that is used for uh, reco recovery purposes. And when somebody touches uh, this, then this can be a suspicious uh, action. <coughs> uh, creating uh, sit histories. Other um, uh, areas are process executions. So with Sysmon, uh, uh, there's a, a very good possibility to monitor which processes are executed and how they are related together. And uh, for example, when a process is executed from an unusual location, when you have an explorer uh, that is started from a temporary directory, then uh, uh, this could be uh, something uh, where an attacker tries uh, some, something evil. Um, a suspicious process relationships. So, uh, reps, uh, CMD or PowerShell X is something uh, quite normal on a uh, on a Windows system. But when it's uh, spawned by a web server, this could be uh, a successful attack uh, and uh, uh, an incident. Uh, and yes, there are two, uh, two uh, other examples uh, of what you can do, or generic Windows events, so service installations that are not. Uh, um, uh, uh, accepted uh, or a new domain trust, everything is locked uh, and you have the possibility to uh, uh, to hunt for um, suspicious events uh, in the logging. Uh, it not only on Windows systems, uh, Unix systems um, are the same, they are also logging. Uh, on Linux, uh, you have the, uh, on Linux, you have the audit logs and uh, have very detailed logging uh, or network uh, system, so uh, in firewall locks you are able to uh, discover when some system is port scanning or uh, tries to discover host. This can be an inventory system, a penetration test, or an attacker that tries to move in your network. And uh, yes, a final example is uh, applications, web applications. So uh, when a web application uh, uh, throws uh, 500 errors, uh, application errors, and uh, in the error legs uh, are uh, specific uh, exceptions, uh, then this could be a sign that uh, someone is trying to attack your uh, web application or even he succeeded in uh, uh, attacking it. And uh, so those are the examples for um, uh, what you can do with logs.
Uh, yes, the main issue uh, here is um, there are many very good resources and blog articles um, uh, where indicators uh, are appearing and uh, the problem here is uh, you see, uh, see uh, for example here an event code 4661 in, uh, in a format that the uh, author of the blog article has uh, posted. Uh, here it is in a different format and you don't have a generic format uh, which uh, you can uh, uh, where you can do a conversion step and it uh, lands directly into your ZM system. And um, so there's no generic uh, uh, format to describe log events, or there wasn't uh, uh, one, like, uh, for example, Yara for uh, file is, or Snort rules uh, that we have seen in the Lightning talk uh, before, so, so network uh, uh, rules. And uh, other problems are heterogeneous environments. Uh, uh, for example, I work in a company that is quite heterogeneous and uh, uh, the IT um, uh, responsibles uh, have their own IT systems, they uh, manage they on their own and they have different ZM systems. Uh, so you can't uh, go out and uh, say he will distribute our log signature as uh, a Splunk uh, query because uh, then most of them wouldn't be able to use them uh, or has to convert them um, and uh, this makes it efficient distribution of uh, log signatures um, uh, hard in such environments and uh, usually in an incident uh, when uh, you uh, are thinking you know every uh, used syst uh, CM system in your environment and someone appears and say hey I have something uh, different that my IT supplier installed here and uh, this makes uh, the distribution of such uh, signatures hard. Um, yes, and you can't rely that there's a baseline that everyone uses uh, in your environment. So uh, different uh, ZM systems uh, maybe have different uh, things they recognize. And uh, yes, uh, vendor login when you uh, first bought a system uh, and you use it for years and have your signatures in it, uh, the costs are very high to move uh, to maybe an, another a more a modern system. And uh, these are the problems um, uh, we try to um, uh, solve uh, with uh, Sigma. So uh, what Sigma is, it's a generic uh, signature format for uh, log events. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's an open repository of Sigma signatures. So uh, currently we have uh, around 130 uh, signatures uh, that are available for free uh, in the repository. And it is a converter um, that converts uh, the uh, signatures into queries um, of uh, target systems. Uh, so currently uh, we support uh, Elasticsearch or uh, Elasticsearch query strings uh, that is used by Kibana, um, Splunk, and Logpoint, uh, other three systems. Um, plus, uh, uh, recently, uh, last week, someone uh, added XPEC uh, Watcher, so alerting um, is now also possible with uh, um, uh, as conversion target. And uh, yes, it's open source, so uh, in the final slides there will be a link to the repository, um, but uh, um, uh, we open sourced everything and uh, it's freely available, and uh, not only freely available, uh, but you can also do pull requests, we are very happy about every pull request. Um, and uh, now I want to show you the rule format, uh, how rules uh, look uh, like, um, I will uh, first go uh, to some uh, points uh, that uh, uh, are documented here. So the rules are in uh, uh, written in YAML. Uh, we decided because it's something that um, uh, machines and uh, humans can both read uh, uh, quite good. Um, there's a scope definition, so you uh, are able to defin define uh, for uh, which logs the signature is uh, relevant. Uh, so, for example, Windows logs and uh, this one. Um, uh, then some search identifiers, so the event code, for example, and uh, so on. Um, there are uh, two possibilities, or uh, yes, even three. You can define key. Uh, 
uh, value pass that uh, the search is done in a particular field uh, in the uh, log that is uh, previously passed out by the CM system, or you uh, can define a list of values. Um, yeah, usually the key value pairs uh, are connected with uh, logical end, and a list of values are connected to logical or, and you can uh, combine both, so you can have a key and uh, multiple values uh, uh, in an array uh, to have um, uh, a rule. And finally, um, yes, a condition, but uh, usually in many rules a condition is uh, quite simple because the implicit uh, logical uh, connection of the items here um, uh, is already sufficient for uh, much uh, use cases. And uh, metadata, so uh, a title, uh, uh, description, also uh, links, uh, whatever you need to work with this rule. Uh, uh, also, in uh, many rules, we have documented what could be the false positives, uh, because uh, these are indicators for uh, um, potential compromise, and uh, uh, it must not be one. So. Uh, here, one example, uh, Mimikatz, uh, a rule that uh, recognizes uh, Mimikatz. It's, uh, um, the source was uh, a blog article where someone has done some research and has seen that uh, this monologues create an uh, event um, uh, when Mimikatz is used, uh, uh, not, not on every use, on a particular use case. And uh, uh, yes, this uh, rule now says, uh, first, the scope. Only the Windows logs and only the Sysmon logs. And uh, it's the event ID 10. Uh, so uh, pro, uh, it's a um, uh, code uh, injection into another process. Oh, uh, anyways, the target image is LSASS exe, and uh, the granted access code is uh, uh, this value. And um, the condition, you see, it's very simple selection. It uh, points to this uh, identifier that is used uh, and that you can choose freely in a Sigma rule. And uh, then the rule that is generated, I show it now to you. Mm. Okay. Ah, is it? So, so what you see here is that uh, uh, the Sigma converter tool um, in a for loop that iterates over uh, three backends uh, that I use here. It's uh, the T parameter says uh, use uh, the given backend. And uh, this is a file that contains the Sigma rule. And uh, now you see here uh, the elastic search, a uh, uh, query that you can now enter in Kibana or copy and paste in Kibana would be this one. So event ID 10 and target image and granted access. And it's the same uh, is done here for uh, Splunk and log point. <coughs> And finally, uh, uh, quite important, uh, the level high means when this appears, then um, it's a serious thing. So you should uh, have a look at it and uh, investigate uh, more deeper what happened uh, on the system. Um, yeah, quite similar rule. Um, I will only show briefly. Uh, this was from our own research. Uh, Windows Credential Editor uh, makes uh, also uh, 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 Sysmon event, so event ID 8, uh, uh, the target process is LSASS X and uh, the start module is empty and uh, with this rule you can uh, recognize the usage of Windows Credential Editor quite uh, good. Another rule you see now here, uh, there are lists of values, not only uh, particular uh, values and uh, uh, this rule says that when a web server that is usually named uh, uh, such uh, executes this command, so UMI, net user, ping, uh, uh, stuff that uh, uh, attackers do to um, to uh, uh, make reconnaissance in uh, your network, and uh, the Sigma converter automatically generates
those words from it. Is it the correct one? Ah, yes. See here, command line, and now all the values are uh, put into it here, and event ID run, and uh, parent image, and the same, the list is uh, generated here. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, so now, uh, rule with another element. The condition now is a bit more, uh, yes, not really complex, but uh, something was added. Uh, this means keywords, so this item, this list, and not one of filters. So the Sigma converter would uh, here generate a rule that uh, recognizes uh, all events that contain uh, these keywords and not uh, these ones because uh, these uh, are usually false positives. Um, yes. Um, now uh, another rule that uh, Contains uh, another element in the uh, in the condition, an aggregation. So uh, you can also uh, say like here, uh, the selection. So when this event appears, the username is not null, uh, and the source workstation is also not null, and uh, the username by workstation appears more than three times, then this is an interesting event. So uh, this is usually when an attacker tries different usernames on uh, uh, on, on workstations uh, to uh, gain the credentials of him. And here in this rule, false positives, there are uh, some valid cases where this appears. Uh, so for example, uh, terminal servers where normal users are logging in and uh, maybe they fail to log in. And uh, uh, so uh, usually uh, something that you whitelist uh, for such servers because uh, the noise is too high here. And uh, for this example, I can show you the result from the Sigma Converter to so uh. so what you see here is uh, the uh, uh, the aggregation from the sigma rule was converted uh, in an aggregation of uh, of the sigma uh, uh, of the Splunk query language. Uh, what we also see here is uh, the not null uh, statement is not uh, supported currently from the sigma c. So there's still uh, stuff uh, that is open that has to be uh, implemented. Um, uh, yes, but. Uh, Aggregations is uh, another thing. So Splunk is the uh, um, only um, uh, backend that uh, uh, implements aggregations uh, of, of the Sigma rules. Uh, there's another backend, the XPEC uh, Watcher. Uh, some backends, for example, uh, the query, query string elastic search uh, uh, language is not able to uh, show, uh, to express such uh, kinds of uh, uh, queries. And uh, so it obviously can't. Uh, Generate them. And now we go back here. And finally, uh, Sigma rule for uh, application errors. So uh, this is for uh, Django. Uh, um, so there are typical um, uh, uh, exceptions that are raised when someone is uh, trying to to uh, hack a web Django web application, or maybe when there's an error in the application, and uh, uh, this uh, can be used to recognize uh, attacks on um, on Django applications in. Uh, in uh, error logs of web servers. So the, um, the repository uh, at, uh, on GitHub contains also rules for Ruby on Rails, for Spring, uh, for Python uh, PEP 249 uh, database API. And uh, I'm currently, uh, as a side project, uh, I'm testing this with honeypots if uh, uh, how good this works. Um, so the Sigma converter. 
So what we have seen, uh, Splunk Elasticsearch Lockpoint is already supported. Uh, we have seen this on the console uh, as an output. What it also can do is uh, to uh, generate uh, Kibana searches. So uh, when you know Kibana, there's a possibility uh, to import multiple search uh, queries in a, from a JSON file. And uh, there's now a backend since uh, three weeks or so that generates such uh, uh, JSON files from multiple uh, Sigma rules and uh, uh, some uh, someone other, uh, Devin uh, Ferguson, implemented a uh, backend for Elasticsearch XPEC uh, watcher alerts. And um, yes, so uh, there's still much uh, room for further backends. So what are the challenges in rule conversion? Um, usually uh, you can't, uh, there's uh, some environment specific or product specific uh, uh, things. So for example, the field names are maybe named differently. Uh, one example is uh, Splunk names uh, the Windows event uh, ID event code while uh, the uh, uh, elk configurations you use uh, usually are using the name uh, the field name event ID and the solution is here that uh, you can give a configuration that uh, maps the uh, uh, field names from the sigma rules to the target uh, uh, ZM rules. Uh, another use case we had found was uh, inconsistent field names. Maybe you have uh, more than one uh, field name that is used in um, uh, in your in your ZM system, and uh, the converter allows to uh, that you give a list. Uh, instead of one uh, one to one mapping and um, then uh, the sigma converter automatically generates uh, all linked lists so field one uh, equals value or field two equals value uh, in such cases or uh, yes uh, the uh, guy who implemented the lock point um, uh, uh, backend uh, told us that uh, the lock point uh, uh, zm uses different field names uh, for different in uh, in con um, dependent on the event id so when you have a particular event id the field name could be different than uh, another one and uh, the solution here was to introduce uh, co conditional field name mappings in the sigma uh, converter configuration. Uh, and another thing that you can configure is lock sources. So you have seen the uh, lock, uh, lock source uh, keyword in the Sigma rule, and uh, it contained, uh, for example, Windows and uh, Sysmon as uh, lock source. Uh, the Sigma converter uh, can be uh, configured in a way that uh, it generates an, uh, uh, queries with additional condi conditions or with uh, specific uh, indices that can be used uh, uh, that are uh, um, where the information is stored, and um, I will show it in an example uh, uh, on the next slide. And uh, yes, rules that refer to uh, subsets uh, of values, uh, for example, to express that uh, something only applies for all client systems. Uh, but this is something we have not implemented yet. Uh, it's also the question it, if it makes sense to implement it in the Sigma converter, if keeping such information in uh, ZM systems. Um, so, uh, yes, the Sigma uh, converter already contains some uh, configuration, the repository conf uh, contains conf uh, configurations that can be used uh, as base for your specific environment. And uh, I show you now one last example what this uh, configuration makes. So now these are two, uh, two uh, executions of uh, the Sigma Converter 1 without uh, a configuration, and the second ha has a configuration given with the C parameter, uh, and the, uh, the Splunk backend is used here. And we see here the uh, uh, query 
that's generated for Splunk is uh, uh, a bit shorter, like this one, because uh, in the configuration, uh, I will show it on the next slide, it con uh, contains um, the information that uh, the uh, reference to the Sysmon logs from um, the Sigma rule uh, uh, should be reflected in a, uh, an additional uh, in an additional uh, um, logical uh, query. And uh, furthermore, what you see here is uh, the, the field event ID. It was named above. Uh, yeah, event ID is now named event code. And this is uh, then something that you can uh, feed into your uh, Splunk system. Okay, so let's continue. Yeah. So uh, here are uh, a few configurations. Um, what we have seen here is uh, this part of the Splunk configuration uh, matches on Windows and Sysmon and generates a condition source type equals the string, what we have seen in the uh, generated query. And the field mapping is uh, contained here. Event ID uh, should be converted to event code. So uh, that is uh, told by this uh, configuration. Uh, this is a configuration for ELK. Uh, what uh, I would uh, want to show here is you can stack the configurations on each other. So for example, uh, this Windows uh, configuration only matches on the product field of the Sigma rule and uh, then says uh, that the rule should be generated to the index log stash Windows star, that uh, it matches uh, only in this index. And uh, there are another rules, uh, for example, Windows security uh, that uh, says that a condition would be added uh, that the event log is security. And uh, when there is a rule that contains Windows as product and service security, then it uh, this both uh, log source rules from the uh, configuration would be merged that uh, the search is only done on, on the logs that are relevant for the uh, given Sigma rule. Yes, this is a uh, log point configuration, uh, a bit complicated because it uh, contains this uh, conditional uh, field mappings. And uh, you see uh, uh, not only one field map mapping, but uh, more than one is uh, also possible. Then the converter makes uh, the OR statements and uh, pulls it uh, out. Uh, yes, so the conversion process, I only want to speak uh, here about this because uh, when you, uh, you know, want to use uh, Sigma for your purpose, but you have a ZM system that is not uh, contained in, in the uh, repository, uh, the only things we have to do is to write a backend, uh, all the other stuff, so the field name mappings and uh, generating additional conditions uh, is done in this part. And uh, we have implemented some base classes that makes the implementation of uh, backends quite easy. So uh, this is a, a Splunk backend and you see uh, it mostly contains only declarations, how uh, specific tokens uh, uh, look alike and uh, uh, some templates, uh, how uh, things are expressed in the Splunk query language and uh, some uh, templates uh, with a bit code around it uh, for generating uh, the aggregations in Splunk, uh, but they are also uh, basically uh, templates. And uh, this is sufficient to uh, create a backend that uh, generates uh, uh, your queries for your target, uh, target language. Okay. So uh, yes, we have many contributors. So if you uh, create a backend uh, or whatever, or you like to uh, participate on uh, on an open source project, we are always happy about uh, contributors. And uh, there are some issues that uh, have to be resolved. So uh, mainly uh, some features that are uh, uh, still needed. Uh, we already have some people that have uh, uh, done something on the project. So uh, thank you from me for that. 
Lens has also a, a Slack channel, and then uh, yes, no, I think in the Opsfast community it's quite uh, um, idle, but uh, in the Slack channel where uh, we discuss things and so, but uh, it's invite only, so uh, contact uh, Florian for it, um, uh, that um, um, because the people uh, that part participate in this community uh, post very sensible stuff here too. Uh, yes, current state of uh, of the whole project. Uh, so uh, we have many rules, got uh, coverage uh, of new threads and uh, research. So when someone uh, publishes a blog post about something, Florian directly picks it up and uh, makes a Sigma rule out of it. Or uh, he uh, tells on Twitter that, that we already have a Sigma rule that covers uh, the specific attack scenario. Um, a conversion, uh, yes. So uh, we need further backends that just generate uh, queries for more uh, target languages. Uh, the support for aggregations is incomplete, um, uh, so uh, there's also some uh, work needed. Um, placeholders are completely not implemented, and um, yes, uh, there's further minor issues here. Uh, MISP integration, so uh, the MISP uh, contains now an attribute type for Sigma rules, and it's uh, also planned uh, uh, that uh, s such uh, rules are verified if uh, they are syntactically correct uh, when they are uh, put into uh, MISP. Um, we have uh, some uh, further ideas, uh, or further idea is um, uh, maybe a tool that generates Sigma rules uh, out uh, uh, of MISP data. Um, currently just an idea. Uh, and supporting uh, tools for creation of Sigma rules or out of source code. So when you have a software project that uh, you can create uh, the rules out of it by pattern matching or whatever. And testing, yes. Uh, most of the rules are still exper experimental, and uh, a valuable input is uh, also that uh, specific rules um, makes uh, creates too much output, too much noise, and it's not usable maybe under specific conditions, so that we can document it in false positives, or uh, yes, maybe even remove a rule or optimize it. And yes, that uh, was it. So you find the project uh, on this URL. Documentation is in the uh, wiki in the GitHub repository. And uh, if you have any questions, um, you, you can now uh, uh, questions or you can contact it uh, us directly. So uh, that's me and uh, Florian who uh, initiated uh, the project. Uh, is uh, reachable by Twitter. And yes, thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Thomas. Uh, any questions? Yeah, everybody is resting after lunch, I see. <laughs> I don't have any mate now. Uh, any questions? Well, well you're, you're going to be around, so if anybody has any questions later, you can direct them to Thomas. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.